so I know this topic is going to be sensitive. It's going to be very controversial. I can already see it already. There's going to be like some dislikes here, but I'm prepared for it. The topic I'm going to be going over today is boy engineers versus girl engineers. But before I begin, just a quick disclaimer, and I'm going to be very blunt about it. I am a feminist, and you might think that's pretty weird. When people typically think of feminists, they might see like a female, typically, who is very hard-pressed, stubborn. You might think that they're always shoving down information down your throat. But I guarantee you, like, that is very rare. If anything, that's probably a very bad negative stereotype that you might think when you hear like the word feminist. But I'm all for like gender equality. Alright, so I mean, we all want good leaders, right? Overall, I don't really care about like who is the leader, whether it's like a male or a female. I know this might even lead into politics, but overall, like we've seen strong men, we've seen strong women, we've seen weak men, and we've seen weak women. And no matter what, we still want strong people, we want strong leaders. So whether you're a male or a female, we want people who are strong. So I know I'm like stating the obvious here, we want strong people leading. I just want to say it because like people, they're still gonna get offended, no matter who's leading, whether you're male or female. It's just so hard to like please people. But again, I'm just gonna say what's the truth what I believe is correct, and overall what I see from my point of view from my workplace. So that means like what I see, what I'm saying to you right now, that doesn't mean that it's gonna apply to your position, your company, your work, your country, you know, it's not all gonna apply to you. So I'm gonna be answering like some general concepts and like questions and you know, perspectives on this topic. Boy engineers versus girl engineers. All right, so now let's begin. All right, so first off, how many are there? Like how many boy engineers are there? And how many girl engineers are there? Based off of my work, okay, just based off my opinion, my own experience and what I'm seeing, there's about like 50-50. About half of them are like male and half are female. So for example, actually our general manager, it's a female. So here she is, she's number one on top. Then spread out, there are three other managers. There's the construction manager, the engineering manager, and the environmental manager. This is where I fall under, the environmental department. So she's on top here. She manages all three of them. These three managers are all three male. So you can see it clearly already. She is ruling, I guess, technically, three other male managers. And so underneath these three managers are like the rest of the, are my coworkers. And so we have a good mix of like half females, half males. But so far the ruling boss is a female. The next big topic, when it comes to like male versus female, it's who gets paid more. So honestly, like I didn't ask everyone saying like how much do you get paid because I feel like this is a very also personal question. So for what I've seen, it depends on your job, and mostly it depends on your experience and like your degrees or certification and how many years of experience you've had in that field. Another major factor is like whether or not you can negotiate your starting salary. My problem was that I didn't negotiate, but maybe someone who came in who had years of experience or maybe who was just good at asking and talking, you know, they could have just asked for more money. So whether you're male or female, you could be good at negotiating no matter, you know, what gender you are. I can only assume that how many years of experience you've had and the higher your position, the more you'll get paid. So honestly, to answer this question, I don't know how much each person gets paid. But for my company, it doesn't depend on whether you're a male or female who gets paid more. It depends on like your experience and certification. But I know statistically in the whole like United States, I know for a fact that males make more than females. Like that is just a given fact. I didn't make the rules, I didn't make the numbers, I didn't make the stereotype. I'm just stating what's true. I'm stating the obvious. It is a known fact. I didn't control it, and I can't like control all of the United States to make this up or anything, so I mean you can look it up yourself. If you're offended, sorry about that, but I can't do anything about it. I do have an example though. So I'm a male environmental engineer. I do have a female co-worker. She's a civil engineer, so we are in different departments. She makes more than me. I asked her because we're close enough. She makes about $101,000 as a female civil engineer and I made like at the time $78,000 for being a male environmental engineer. So that is a big difference. She's making like over $20,000 more than me. But so this is dependent on her experience. She's been in that company for like three or more years, I forgot how many, but I just started that year. So maybe in time I'll eventually reach her level. It also depends on like the difficulty of her position. So she had like, you know, more projects than me. She has to do more stuff than me. I don't really have that much compared to her, like I don't have that much work. So obviously she'll have to be compensated more because she's doing more. The next thing is how are we treated? Is there like a advantage or disadvantage? Are people being treated fairly? So in my company, I mean women are treated respectfully. I mean like it's 2020, the civil rights era and so on, like those are long past. I know there's still some residue right there because you know in terms of like equal pay it's not 
up to par, but like no one in my company is like being harassed in any way. They're not being misrepresented, they're not being mistreated, and it's like much more so like enforced because I work in a military base. So over there, there's like no advantage or disadvantage for being a male or female. Everyone there is like literally treated equally. And more specifically, on that base, we have like a very strong female lead. So for example, on that base, like the main colonel who's like overseeing the entire base, like it's a female. In the previous year, it was also a female. So this entire base is run by a female leader. I'm not exactly sure what it's like in other bases, but at least for my base, we have a very strong presence of strong female leaders like running the whole operation of the base. And in the military, like you earn your respect. If you're not given it just because you're a female or because someone feels bad for you or maybe because you are a captain but like you're weak-minded. If you're a captain and like you're weak, you don't earn your respect. If you don't deserve it, you won't get it. That's just how it is in like real life in general. The next one underneath this, who has more work? You think that maybe like the males might want to do more work, but it really is just who has the most experience. So we have equal amount of males and females. If they both have like the same amount of experience, then they'll both be given the same amount of work. So it's not like just because you're male, you're given 80% of the work, and then just because you're female, you're given the other 20%. No, it's not like that. It's depending on like how difficult the project is. So we have like two professional engineers, let's say. Like one of them is male, one of them is female. They both have the same years of experience. So they both will be given the same amount of difficult work. Again, what I'm saying is that there are no favorites, there are no advantages or disadvantages, there's no favoritism, there's just like, here's your work. You don't care like who you are, just get the job done. Alrighty, so we got the hard questions out the way, and this is like, again, a pretty controversial topic. I know for a fact that if there are people who disliked it, it'll probably be the males. Like, the majority of the males, honestly, they cannot accept the fact that they might be weaker than some females. I'm gonna tell you right now, I've seen a very strong female leaders who I know like I cannot beat and I admit that it's okay to be like not better than everyone it's okay to even be not better than like a male or a female just accept the fact that you aren't the best I'm okay with that because I know it's true and I know for example like I had a strong mom you know she worked hard she's female she doesn't deserve to get paid less than my dad who maybe did the same thing that she did you know they both are very strong parents. They're both strong male and female, but it doesn't make sense why one person would get, you know, a, an advantage or have some sort of favoritism just because you're male or, or a female. I mean, that just doesn't make sense. That's inequality right there. You're doing the same thing, but just because you're like biologically different, like that doesn't make sense. Okay, so that was just my rant. And this is also just my perspective, a male perspective, okay? A male perspective from this topic covering between like boy engineers and girl engineers. Again, a very biased male environmental engineering perspective. So again, it could be different for you, it could be different from your location, your position, your company, whether you're a female and you see something different from your workplace, maybe just, you know, let me know. And let others know that way you can sort of warn them like this could happen. You know, what he's saying in the video, it's different from what I'm experiencing, so you know, different parts of the world will have different situations. Alright, so I hope this video helps out and lets you know what's going on in this field. Alright, goodbye.